Hello, it's Patrick here from the GarageBandGuide.com. Just like the amp designer, GarageBand's pedal board has enough power under the hood to really help bring out the best in your guitar tracks. Whether you're looking for bone-crunching distortion, psychedelic delay, or something more subtle to round out your sound, I can pretty much guarantee that you'll find just what you're looking for amongst the pedal board's 30 stomp boxes. In this video, I'll show you how to use and get the most out of the stellar stomp box effects. To get to the pedal board on any audio track, you'll need to open the Smart Controls window. You can do this by clicking on the dial icon in the top left of the GarageBand window, or by using the keyboard shortcut B. Then click on the small pedal icon in the top right corner of the Smart Controls window. If you don't see that pedal icon or you're using a different kind of track, so for example on a software instrument or drummer track, you can add the pedal board via Smart Controls plugin menu. So straight off the bat here, and in true GarageBand style, there are dozens of presets available to you if you just want to get stuck in and start making some noise. The pedal board's interface is pretty straightforward. Here's where your selected pedals are displayed. The pedal area is where you can switch your selected pedals on and off, as well as adjust their settings. It's worth noting that the order that the pedals are in left to right acts as a virtual signal chain, meaning you can produce different sounds and end results depending on what order your pedals are in. Definitely worth experimenting with. The pedal browser shows all available effects. You can refine the types of effects shown here by category. For example, if I choose delay here, I can choose from the four delay type pedals on offer. The router controls your signal flow and the two effect buses available in the pedal board. Adding or removing pedals from your pedal board is as easy as dragging and dropping into the pedal area to add, or dragging and dropping from the pedal area back into the pedal browser to remove. To reorder your pedals in the pedal board signal chain, you just need to drag and drop as well. It's a very intuitive and elegant interface to work with. So what kind of effects are available to you? As I mentioned earlier, you have seven categories of effects at your disposal. Distortion, which includes your fuzz, overdrive and distortion pedals. includes an octave pedal and user-controlled pitch pedal. Modulation, that's your flange, chorus, phaser and tremolo pedals. Thank you. 
has a selection of echo and delay effects. Filter has manual and auto wah pedals as well as a graphic equaliser. Dynamics is your lonely wee compressor pedal and Utility contains your splitter and mixer. Now these don't directly affect the sound of your track but are used in the router. The router area gives you access to two separate signal paths, bus A and bus B. Pedals are put onto bus A by default when you add them to the pedal area. Now there are two utilities that you can use here. The splitter splits the signal between bus A and bus B either equally in split mode or at a specific frequency. In frequency mode, signals above the frequency that you set are routed to bus B, while signals below that frequency are routed to bus A. The mixer controls the levels between bus A and bus B, and you'll probably want this at the end of your signal chain. The mix switch here solos bus A, mixes the A and B signals, or solos bus B. And you can pan bus A and bus B here using the knobs provided as well. To reposition the point where the signal splits, you can either drag and drop the splitter itself or click the small grey circle between your pedals. So to give you an example of the router in action, our three pedals here, the vintage drive first, then the splitter set to split mode, then a compressor and chorus on bus A. The mixer at the end of the signal chain is set to mix, meaning that we're getting the vintage drive on its own from bus B and the vintage drive with compression and chorus from bus A being mixed together by the mixer at the end of the signal chain. I can then use the panning controls here to widen the sound of the track. Now this is a really great way to thicken up a guitar track and indeed a full mix. Well worth experimenting with. It's worth knowing that the pedal board isn't just available on guitar or indeed audio tracks. You can use these effects on any type of track in GarageBand and these pedals sound so good that it's really worth experimenting with this. Thank you. 
And there you have it, that's everything you need to get going with GarageBand for Mac's pedal board feature. If you want more info on how to make your GarageBand guitars sound great, check out my video on GarageBand's amp designer. I'll put a card up in the corner there or a link in the description below. If you're just getting started with GarageBand on Mac or just want a refresh on the basics, you can download my quick start guide absolutely free. I'll put a link to that as well down in the description. How do you think GarageBand for Mac's built-in pedal board effects compare to some more premium offerings from other companies? Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. I've been Patrick from thegaragebandguide.com and I'll see you next time. Bye for now.